Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Paul Tamaya. We'd like to request everyone to come closer. Thank you. Thank you all for coming here. And thank you all for braving the rain. And thank God for clearing it away. The, the last time uh, the SDP held a pre-election rally, it was actually before the 2011 general election. It was a memorable event with festivities, with speeches, and an emotional national, day, uh, national anthem. It was a little like today, but with no rain uh, and uh, uh, a smaller crowd. We were planning to have one in 2015, but as you know, what happened was the Prime Minister decided to hold a snap election not long after the death of Singapore's longest serving Prime Minister. As John mentioned earlier, many people ask us, when is the election going to be? In reality, we have no idea when the election is going to be. And the reason is because we do not have in Singapore an independent election commission. My mother has lived in the same house for the last 40 years, but she has moved from Tanglin to Kreta Ayer to Tanjung Paga to Momeng Kalang and now to Holland Bukit Timah. Quite a journey for someone who's lived in one house. The decisions on the constituencies are made by the highly qualified members of the Election Boundaries Review Committee, who in their day jobs report to the MTI Minister, the MND Minister, the Prime Minister and the Law Minister. All of them are PAP Central Executive Committee members. Surely this is not fair. In the coming elections too, unfortunately we can expect a nasty mudslinging campaign from the PAP ministers and candidates. This time however, they are going to be protected by new laws which can only be activated by a minister and not by an opposition candidate. We have already seen the vicious personal attacks by a member of the so-called 4G leadership on a poet invited to lead a class for a group of less than two dozen students. Now this is not someone who is a serious threat to the minister's multi-million dollar salary, nor is it someone working to cause him to lose another election. This is actually an award-winning poet and playwright who was lumped together with neo-Nazis and jihadists. The vigorous reactions of Singaporeans from Prof Tomiko to the arts community give me some encouragement that at least Singaporeans will stand up to this kind of bullying. Now, you know, when it comes to personal attacks, the SDP and our Secretary General are the world experts. But that has never intimidated us. For the last 39 years, the SDP has not hesitated to speak up for all Singaporeans, including the marginalized, the poor, the elderly, and the sick. Now, the SDP doesn't just speak up. We have constructive policy, policy proposals which cover education, housing, healthcare, jobs, immigration, and other issues. All of these are on our website and in the manifesto booklet that hopefully most of you have bought or if you're in the process of buying. What these policies have in common is a set of values. The SDP values. People before profits, wisdom before wealth, and rights before riches. Unlike the PAP, we do not consider a pledge something aspirational. When we make a pledge, we make a promise and we'll stick to these. And I think everyone who has followed the SDP for the last 39 years will know this to be a fact, long before I joined the party. Unfortunately, the SDP will not be able to speak up and make real change for the people of Singapore until we are elected to Parliament. You all remember the major changes that happened in Singapore after GE 2011 when the PAP dropped its vote share to a historical low. Miracles happened. There was a small old age pension in the form of the silver support scheme. MediShield changed into MediShield Life, which covered pre-existing illnesses. These were positive steps. But then in 2015, we had the freak election, and then things moved backwards again. We had increase in costs. We had complicated schemes. We now have this Medeca scheme generation uh, program which is so complicated that thousands of dollars of taxpayer money have to be spent employing celebrities to explain them to ordinary Singaporeans. Meanwhile, the government rolls out its red carpet for dubious foreigners with empty promises. 
You all know about the electric car project that suddenly disappeared when the British CEO, who had already been given privileges, including the right to buy landed property. At the same time, according to Professor Irene Ng from NUS, 11 to 13 percent of Singaporean households live in absolute poverty and at least a quarter in relative poverty. This simply cannot be allowed to continue in a wealthy country like ours. Since GE2015, life has become harder for many ordinary Singaporeans. The PAP has also become more insecure, tightening its already tight grip on the media and civil society. I recently finished reading uh, the former new paper editor P. N. Baldry's book, Reluctant Editor. On pages 60 and 61 of the book, Mr. Balji describes the editor-in-chief of the Straits Times meeting then-minister George Yeo over some mild criticism of a PAP MP. The conversation is chilling. The minister apparently told Mr. Leslie Fong, our MPs may be wrong, but the government will protect them at all costs. To which the editor replied, yes, minister, we know it will be our blood on the floor. The message clearly went out to our local journalists and the media. We cannot continue with that kind of intimidation and the conformity that results. We need an independent media to cover important events and policies. Even more, we really do need independent and diverse voices in Parliament. Parliament is where ministers are held accountable to us, the people of Singapore. We need to deny the PAP a two-thirds majority this will prevent them from changing the constitution at will. For example, they will not be allowed to impose a racial quota for the elected presidency, but not for the Navy or Air Force just to suit their political aims. Despite all the intimidation and gerrymandering, we still have the fundamental right to vote in elections every four to five years. We are not Hong Kong. We have the right to vote for our leaders. In this coming election, we will make important choices for our future and the future of our election, our children. We need to send a message like we did in 2011. We need to deny the PAP a two-thirds majority in parliament. If not, we are looking at a bleak future. Maybe 10 million people in what is already the world's most crowded city. A GST rise on a regressive taxation system in the world's most expensive city and having too much of our savings locked up in our CPF without the chance to enjoy the promised vacation or pilgrimage or simply respite from the relentlessly rising cost of living when we reach retirement age. You can say no to 10 million people, no to 9% GST, and no to retaining our CPF. Come. Join us to help deny the PAP its two-thirds majority. Volunteer, contribute in whatever way you can to help us together build a democratic society based on justice and equality. Thank you and happy Deepavali.